I'm here in Saudi Arabia. I am Hilali. How on earth did we get to this point? Neymar Jr. was destined to be the king of football after Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. But he left Europe overnight and is now going to play in the Saudi Pro League. It's an absolutely crazy timeline. But don't worry because we're about to discover together the best and worst moments of Neymar's incredible life story and career. And yes, to enjoy some of his uncanny skills along the way, courtesy of your buddies here at Oh My Goal. So are you ready? <laughs> yeah, boy. Let's do this. Neymar de Silva Santos Jr., or as we all know him, Neymar Jr., was born in 1992 in Moja das Cruzes, one of the toughest neighborhoods in Sao Paulo suburbs. Let's just say it's not the most pleasant place you're ever likely to find. And this may sound like a cliche, but it isn't. Neymar had to overcome difficulties literally since he was born. When he was just a four-month-old baby, Neymar was involved in a horrific accident. His dad, Neymar Sr., crashed his car on the mountainside, and Neymar was ejected from the baby and rolled under the passenger seat. The worst part was that despite the tremendous pain, his parents couldn't find him. I was desperate and said to my wife, I'm dying. But my worst fear beyond the pain was the sensation that followed. Where was Junior? We couldn't find him. We thought the force of the impact had thrown him out of the car. The people who rescued us found our son underneath the seat of the car. Neymar Jr. was seriously bleeding after a glass cut deep into his forehead, but luckily a fast intervention at the hospital was enough to save him. After the accident, the family had a full recovery and went back to their humble lives. To give some extra context about Neymar's tough childhood, here are a couple of facts. Neymar, his parents and his sister had to cram into one tiny bedroom and all shared a single bed. He was sent to one of the most dangerous schools in the neighborhood. His dad had a brief footballing career, but after becoming a father had to work three jobs just to make ends meet. So as you may have guessed, Neymar's family was dirt poor in the early 90s, to the point that many times they had to use candles due to the elevated electricity bill. Cash was so tight for them that eventually they had to move to their grandparents' place to save money. Still, when he's asked about his childhood, Neymar's first memory is a good one. His parents' unconditional love. They are everything to me. They are my base. They help me in all that I need. I thank God for putting me in this family. Today, I can give back to them what they did for me, he assured. Within that nurturing environment, Neymar's mum, Nadine, gave his little boy a football when he was just two years old. And for Neymar, it was love at first sight. I had almost 50 balls indoors. It used to drive my mum crazy when I was small, I didn't want anyone else to get the ball. I always wanted to score a goal. At home, I would always be dribbling my ball around the chairs and the table. From an early age, Neymar showed a natural talent for the sport. His prestigious dribbling skills and improvisation with the ball were developed on the streets and on the beach, as well as in his family's kitchen. And his unique abilities eventually led him to join Santos when he was 12. Fun fact, did you know that Neymar was actually a fan of one of Santos's fiercest rivals? So that was a f***ing lie. That's right, the Brazilian used to support Palmeiras, one of Sao Paulo's biggest teams, and he even admitted it just a few years ago on Twitter. Let's be honest, for those who are saying that I supported Palmeiras, I did, until I went to Santos when I was 12. After that, I fell in love with Santos. Did you know that, or were you as surprised as me? My disappointment is immeasurable. Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Anyway, Neymar joined Santos at 12, and he instantly became the club's wonder kid. But it was two years before that when Santos legend Zito spotted Neymar at a futsal tournament. The two-time world champion was amazed by what he had seen, and urged Santos to sign Neymar. Aware of the fact that Neymar was only 10, and too young to play for any of Santos's academy teams, he gave an order then create a team for him. The board listened and consequently signed young Neymar, who became a TV personality when he was just 10. It's very nice to be signing autographs so early. Hopefully I'll be signing more from now on, he said, on one of those rare footage interviews from back then. Little did he know that he would become one of the best footballers in the world. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's take a step back. Neymar would play for Santos' academy for seven years before finally making it to the first team. Santos is a big team, yes, but they've almost always been overshadowed by the three state giants, Sao Paulo, Corinthians and Palmeiras. 
That being said, Santos had its golden generation in the early 60s when Pele led the team to win back-to-back -back Copa Libertadores titles, making them the South American kings. But since then, Santos failed to maintain their place among the big boys. They had won just one league title since Pele's retirement in 2002, when Neymar's biggest idol, Robinho, was the rising star. Despite that victory, Robinho failed to become Pele's heir, so when Neymar arrived, the fans were hopeful, yet cautious, regarding his potential to make history with the club. But those doubts were quickly dissipated as Neymar instantly became Brazil's hottest prospect. Suddenly, that skinny young kid started dribbling past the fiercest opponents they faced. No rival could get anywhere near the ball because the young wonder was just too good. The year was 2009 and the 17-year-old Neymar was in impressive form throughout his first season as a pro. He played 48 games for Santos. With the legendary Ronaldinho and Ronaldo already in their veteran years, Neymar was destined to be Brazil's next big thing. By 2010, he won the state title for Santos with a scintillating performance. Now, in case you're not very familiar with the Brazilian tournaments, the domestic league, aka Brasileiro, was created in the late 50s, so the state titles are a big thing for them, as they are the most traditional competitions. Fans and media had no doubt Neymar had to be called up to the 2010 World Cup, but the Brazilian coach, Dunga, had different plans. And even though he had been chosen as the state championship's best player, Neymar didn't make the cut. To be fair though, Dunga also cut Ronaldinho and Pato from the World Cup and specified why Neymar didn't make it. He started to play as a starter for Santos in January, and our last match before the World Cup squad was announced was in March. The story that we have often seen in Brazil is that players with only a handful of matches have never really lived up to expectations in the World Cup. Far from being angry, Neymar had a mature reaction in front of the cameras. It was not my turn to play a World Cup, he told FIFA.com. I have always worked for this day. Unfortunately, it didn't happen for me on that occasion. Wow, that's very big of you, Neymar. Anyways, he remained in Brazil, training with Santos, and he led his team to their first, and to this day, their only Brazilian Cup title. And guess who scored the opening goal in the final and got the top scorer award? Yup, that 18-year-old was proving Dunga wrong. Still, his biggest challenge was to take Santos back to their first Copa Libertadores title without Pele after almost half a century. But the youngster was destined for greatness. And in 2011, he would rewrite his club's history. First, he was named the best player of the state championship as Santos won back-to-back -back titles. But second, and by far the most important achievement with the Brazilian side, he lifted the Copa Libertadores trophy, beating Uruguayan giant Peñarol in the final. After a tough goalless draw in the first leg, it was all to play for in Sao Paulo. And this may sound repetitive because I said the same thing just a moment ago, but again, Neymar scored the opener and was awarded the tournament's best player. He was just too good to keep playing in South America. Neymar's abilities would have normally taken him to Europe by then, but Santos made a Herculean effort to retain him. It became a national matter. They wanted to enjoy Neymar's magic just a little bit longer before letting him go to his inevitable future in Europe. The 19-year-old wasn't in a rush, so he agreed to stay with an important paycheck increase. Neymar was a sensation throughout the continent and received the 2011 Best Player in South America award. But things weren't always up though. Soon enough, he would learn a tough lesson in the Club World Cup final when Barcelona destroyed Santos with a 4-0 victory. The third place among the best players in the tournament wasn't enough for Neymar, who understood that he still needed to take a leap in order to truly become one of the best in the world. Moreover, when he faced his first big challenge representing Brazil, his performance was somewhat disappointing. You see, Brazil had never won the gold medal in the Olympics, and with Neymar as the main star, they reached the final in 2012. But they were surprisingly beaten by Mexico and had to settle for the silver. The speculations were all over the place. Was he a great player? No doubt about it. But did he have what it takes to have Europe at his feet? Two more titles with Santos, his third consecutive state championship, and the Recopa Sudamericana, the equivalent of the UEFA Super Cup, completed his trophy cabinet before he finally said yes to leaving Brazil. He had been linked to Real Madrid, Chelsea, PSG, Manchester City, and Juventus, among others. But since he played against Leo Messi in the Club World Cup, 
he knew that he wanted to become a Blaugrana. Yeah, I know it's old news that Neymar eventually chose FC Barcelona, but if you were old enough back in 2013, I'm sure you had had enough of the drama surrounding the Brazilian Santos and the two Spanish giants. To be fair, it was Real Madrid who first spotted him. You know that Florentino Perez obsession with signing Brazilian hot prospects? When Neymar first joined Santos, his agent, who represented Robinho as well, traveled to Spain, but bureaucracy got in the way and the young star remained in Brazil. Years went by and when Neymar became world famous, Perez tried to pay the release clause, but this time it was Santos who said no. They wanted to retain Neymar until 2013 to celebrate the club's 100th anniversary. A furious Florentino organized a call with all parties involved and it was reported that he insulted Neymar's dad by telling him that neither he nor his son knew who they were dealing with. Who are you talking to right now? Yikes. Once Real Madrid was ruled out, FC Barcelona became interested in the youngster. The year was 2012, and the Blaugranas had a secret weapon to convince Neymar to join them. I always take Ronaldinho's advice very much into account, and he has told me wonderful things about Barca and the city, which he told me is wonderful. Barca is an excellent team, as everyone knows, full of stars. Ronnie knew just how to convince him. By that point, Neymar had also been enchanted with the possibility of potentially playing alongside Leo Messi. But the back and forth negotiations between clubs seemed to put the operation in jeopardy. The convincing factor was that Barcelona agreed to let him stay until the end of the 2012-13 season. So Santos could keep him until the anniversary and Neymar would join the team that he liked the most. 235 games, 136 goals, and six titles later, his journey with Santos reached its inevitable conclusion. And a day later, the club admitted to having received two offers for him without revealing names, but Neymar announced his decision. I won't wait until Monday. My family and friends already know my decision on Monday. I will sign a contract with Barcelona. FC Barcelona were set to officially announce him hours later, but Neymar couldn't help himself. My time has come. The transfer, according to the president in that moment, Josep Maria Bartomeu, was done for over $61 million. And just like that, Neymar's journey as a Blaugrana had started. But before joining them, he played and won the 2013 Confederations Cup with his national team, which, to this day, is his only major title with Brazil. And I'll sound like a broken record, but guess what? He scored in the final and was awarded the best player of the tournament. They beat Spain 3-0 in the final, so it became clear for all Neymar was ready to play with the best of the best. The timing of Neymar's arrival to Barcelona wasn't the best. Even though they had recently won La Liga, the team would receive terrible news a few days after Neymar started training with them. The coach, Tito Villanova, had to resign due to health issues that would result in his eventual passing months later. The sudden change of manager was a knockout punch for the squad, and the players failed to live up to expectations as a result. And so did Neymar, who showed some sparks of the marvelous youngster he had been, but didn't make a major impact as expected. That being said, he had a promising start as he scored the title-winning goal in the Spanish Super Cup, his first and only trophy of the season. He also had tremendous performances in the games against Los Blancos. He scored in the 2-1 victory at the Camp Nou and had an assist to win 4-3 away. But the team's results were disastrous. In fact, let's try an experiment. I'm sure that almost none of you remember who was the coach that season without researching on Google. What do you mean by that? If you know it, write it down in the comments and remember to subscribe to our channel. You can do it! Now, in case you don't remember the coach's name, I'll give you a few more seconds while I keep telling you just how bad that campaign was for them. Barcelona lost the Copa del Rey final to Real Madrid and then wasted the chance to win La Liga in the last game at home against Atletico Madrid. Moreover, Real Madrid won the Champions League after 12 years, so the players were widely criticized. So for the 2014-15 season, the second one for Neymar with the Catalans, the club signed a man who would play a key role for them, Luis Suarez. The Uruguayan was the perfect fit for the Neymar-Messi duo, and the three of them formed the now legendary MSN. With Luis Enrique appointed as the new manager, replacing Gerardo Martino, there, I said it, Barcelona became an unstoppable machine. Neymar had been seriously injured during the 2014 World Cup, in which he was having incredible performances. The horrific injury resulted in a broken bone in Neymar's back. So the Brazilian missed the rest of the tournament and Brazil definitely felt his absence. After becoming the favorites to win it all, they historically lost 7-1 to Germany in the semi-finals. For Neymar, it was one of the toughest moments of his adult life. 
and he received psychological assistance throughout his recovery period. Once he was back though, he showed his amazing mental strength. Neymar's form was even better than the one he had shown at Santos, and he improved his already incredible goal-scoring numbers. For example, he scored in four consecutive La Liga games three different times in that season. 22 goals and 9 assists in just 33 games played made him arguably the most important player in the domestic league, which they won in an incredible race against Real Madrid. Next stop was the Copa del Rey, and surprise surprise, Neymar made it to the score sheet in a 3-1 triumph against Athletic Club. The resemblance with the 2009 treble was remarkable, but the final challenge was still ahead of them. After being yet again the team's game-changer in the semi-finals, scoring three times against FC Bayern, Neymar and Barcelona faced Juventus, pursuing their fifth UCL trophy. The two star signings of the season, Ivan Rakitic and Suarez, gave Barcelona the lead, despite Morata's early equaliser for the old lady. The match had some electrifying final minutes, with Juventus desperately trying to take things to extra time, when a spectacular counter-attack found, well, you know who. It was Neymar who secured the title for the Blaugranas. His goal also put him top of the Champions League scoring charts alongside Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Two years after leaving Brazil, and he had already achieved the pinnacle of European football glory. Thanks to the marvellous MSN, Barcelona was once again the best team in the world. The Brazilian had accepted his place as the perfect sidekick for Messi, despite the supposed ego problems that some had anticipated. He played arguably the best football he's ever shown in his entire career. But before 2015 was over, Messi suffered a ligament injury that kept him off the pitch for two months. Neymar became the team's most dangerous weapon, and he scored 14 goals in just 12 La Liga games. With the Argentine back on the team, the MSN trio shined in the Club World Cup, and Neymar won the trophy he couldn't lift in 2011 with Santos. All of this earned him the podium in the 2015 Ballon d'Or ceremony, in which he ended up in third place just behind Messi and CR7. Everything was going even better than planned, and Neymar's future couldn't look any brighter. But soon enough, things would start to fall apart. Barcelona won the domestic double in La Liga and the Copa del Rey, with Neymar once again scoring in the final, this time against Sevilla. But a new Champions League campaign won by Real Madrid overshadowed the Blaugrana's achievements. In the second part of the season, Neymar changed his game, but was equally important. He scored 8 goals less, but had 14 more assists. With that incredible form, he then went to the 2016 Olympics. Remember what we told you earlier about Brazil having zero gold medals in male football? Well, Neymar accepted the incredibly heavy burden of leading his country's hopes in the Olympics, held the Rio de Janeiro. The South Americans faced Germany in the last game, yep, Germany. The same guys that smashed them two years earlier in the World Cup, I can't imagine a moment with more pressure than that. But the great thing about footballers like Neymar is that far from panicking, they actually revel in playing in those type of games. Neymar scored the opener for his national team, but the Germans hit back and took the final to a penalty shootout. After the Europeans missed their fifth shot, it all went down to Neymar's penalty kick. If he scored, Brazil would win the gold medal for the first time. Of course, he got the job done and became a national hit. Fourth season as a Blaugrana, a new controversy surrounded Neymar. He started to wonder if it was time for him to look for a team who'd give him the leadership role he'd wanted. Make no mistake, Neymar was absolutely delighted with Messi, but he was now 24 and felt ready to start a new chapter. Barcelona kept their incredible pace in the domestic competitions, but the fans had just one goal, to see their team lift the UCL trophy once again. After all, they still had their dream attacking trio, plus Iniesta, Rakitic, and Busquets in the middle. So it was a huge blow when Paris Saint-Germain destroyed the Blaugrana 4-0 in the first leg of the Champions League round of 16. The dressing room was completely depleted, as were the fans. Barcelona was almost taken out of the biggest objective once again. But in that moment, when everything seemed to be lost, Neymar became FC Barcelona's hero and savior. Firstly, he made it clear that he was not going to give up with 90 minutes left to play. Through his Instagram account, the Brazilian sent a message that is now historical. As long as there's 1% of chance, we'll have 99% of faith. Suddenly, the lack of hope turned into an optimistic sensation that maybe, just maybe, the miracle was possible. And when the team needed him, Neymar delivered arguably his best performance yet. Barcelona played a perfect first half and had a 2-0 lead just before half-time. 
Messi scored the third goal and the fans were ecstatic, but that's when Edinson Cavani put a stop to the utopic remontada. The Uruguayans scored and due to away goals, the Catalans needed to score three more goals to win the tie. It seemed to be an impossible task to recover after PSG's goal. The dream was almost over, but Neymar proved what he's made of. In the 88th minute, he scored an exquisite free kick. Still, his team was two goals away from a ticket to the quarterfinals and time was almost up. Two minutes later, Suarez got fouled in the box and Barcelona were awarded their second penalty that evening. Who took care of it? Yup, Neymar didn't hesitate and gave the Blaugranas a 5-1 lead. The miracle was one goal away. In arguably the craziest UCL game of all time, PSG held down the fort as much as they could until the very last second. Barcelona put everyone, and I mean everyone, even Ter Stegen in the French side's box, looking for a miraculous header. But geniuses always manage to surprise us, and that night, the genius was Neymar. When everyone expected a long ball into the box, the Brazilian instead dribbled past his opponent, taking an extra second to look for a teammate in space, and gave the assist of his career to Sergi Roberto, who performed the miracle. <laughs> madness, absolute madness. Barcelona had recovered from a 4-0 defeat against one of the best teams in Europe. And yeah, Messi may have made the headlines thanks to his iconic goal celebration, but it was Neymar who carried his team into the quarterfinals. Did that unfair recognition play a part in Neymar's decision to leave just a few months later? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Although after that, Barcelona's incredible remontada joy didn't last long, as Juventus knocked them out in the following stage. Out of the Champions League, Neymar and Barcelona had to switch their focus to the domestic competitions. They won their third consecutive Copa del Rey title after beating Alaves in the final, and guess who scored the clutch goal when the game was tied? That's right folks, Neymar gave Barcelona the lead and lifted one more trophy with the Catalans. That being said, the end of the season had a bittersweet feeling as they couldn't surpass Real Madrid in La Liga. Plus, Los Blancos also won the UCL title, adding more pressure to the Blaugrana stars to bring international silverware back to Camp Nou. After four years playing for FC Barcelona, Neymar really considered if it was time to leave. Of course, we know this now, but back then, no one could imagine a member of MSN leaving the club. In fact, Neymar did spend pre-season with the Catalans preparing for the 2017-18 campaign, but after a summer of negotiations between PSG and Barcelona, the Parisians, or should we say QSI, the club owners, went for the unthinkable. They were ready to pay Neymar's $250 million release clause. The ongoing negotiations didn't seem to reach a good ending for PSG, as Neymar assured the media that he was happy at Barcelona. Things became a little more serious when Neymar's dad met with Nasser al khalifi in Paris, but Gerard Piquet brought tranquility to the Catalans with his infamous Instagram post, he's staying. PSG had had enough of the soap opera negotiations and gave an ultimatum to Neymar. Now, as they were ready to pay the release clause, Barcelona couldn't legally prevent them from negotiating directly with the player. And after what seemed like way too much thinking and hesitating, Neymar gave the Catalans the worst news. He had decided to leave the club and join PSG in the most expensive transfer in football history. As Neymar would explain a few years later, his decision wasn't easy and denied that being overshadowed by Messi was the main reason. I left because I wanted a new challenge, the challenge of winning and looking for something new. It was very difficult to make that decision. There were even moments when I hesitated and decided not to leave. I was like this for about two weeks before deciding to go to Paris. And just like that, Neymar left the place where he got to the top and won absolutely everything. Now, he had the biggest challenge of his career, to prove that he could be the best player in the world. Make no mistake, Neymar's arrival to Paris was a significant moment in football history. And whilst the PSG fans were ecstatic to see the Brazilian wearing the club's colours, others started to wonder if it was fair to let the new wealth pay unimaginable amounts to sign these kind of players. It is the consequence of uh, the ownership, you know, uh, that has changed completely uh, the whole uh, landscape of football in the last 15 years. And uh, once a country owns a club, uh, everything is possible. It's impressive, no? It's an impressive amount of money, uh, 200 uh, uh, million of pounds. That uh, if uh, PSG is uh, is able 
to do this, why not? But PSG didn't only sign Neymar that summer, they also brought teenage marvel Kylian Mbappe to the team. The Mbappe-Neymar duo plus the already beloved Edinson Cavani and Angel Di Maria turned the Parisians into the most feared offensive outfit in Europe. Nevertheless, just a month after joining PSG, Neymar already had his first scandal. And it's something that's had its sequel in 2022. You see, in September 2017, Neymar and Edinson Cavani gave us the first chapter of the penalty gate. It was reported that QSI had promised the Brazilian that he'd be in charge of taking the spot kicks, but no one told Cavani about this decision. So after the Uruguayan refused to leave his place as the penalty taker, Al Khalifi offered a money compensation, which was also rejected by Cavani. The squad backed Cavani and Neymar earned his first haters within a squad full of stars. Despite that, the Brazilian managed to have a fantastic first campaign with the Parisians. 28 goals, 16 assists in just 30 games Games proved why PSG paid so much for him. Even though Paris Saint-Germain had a tremendous amount of attacking prowess, Neymar was by far the most influential asset back then. In fact, his performances were so good that he made it to the Ballon d'Or podium again. As it happened in 2015, Neymar was third behind Cristiano and Messi. So apart from the two goats, he was considered the best of the best. But the dawn of 2018 would bring bad news for the former FC Barcelona star, who suffered a metatarsal fracture that kept him off the field for four months. Neymar missed the second leg of the UCL round of 16, in which PSG lost to Real Madrid. And even though he won the Ligue 1, Coupe de France and the League Cup, Everyone was thinking the same thing. What if? What if Neymar hadn't picked up that injury? Would PSG have won the Champions League? His first season had ended without achieving the international success he looked for, but PSG still believed that Neymar could take them to the next level. And meanwhile, Neymar got in shape in time to play his second World Cup for Brazil, and he showed some sparks of his repertoire, helping his side to secure victories against Costa Rica, Serbia, and Mexico. But his ultimate dream came to an unfortunate end in the quarterfinals, when the Belgian dream team obtained a 2-1 victory that sent the Brazilians packing way earlier than expected. Neymar had to do something. He was performing quite well, but injuries wouldn't let him play as much as he would have wanted. But unfortunately, that nightmare was only just the beginning. Neymar's second season at PSG had many things in common with the first one. The Brazilian recovered from his injury and was key in the team's success throughout the first semester. But in the last days of January, he picked up a new injury that kept him out of the UCL round of 16. PSG lost again, this time against Man United, and Neymar insulted the referees due to a controversial VAR decision. This ended up in a three-match ban for Neymar, who was visibly furious with his current situation. But the worst episode was yet to come. During the Coupe de France final, Neymar scored for PSG, but Stavrené surprisingly recovered and ended up winning the match. When the Parisians walked through the stands to receive their second place medals, Neymar was seen punching a fan that teased him. The French Federation imposed a three-match ban, yep, exactly the same as UEFA, and Neymar had to watch the last games of the season from the stands. The Ligue 1 title wasn't enough for the fans, who started wondering if Neymar wasn't in fact the saviour they were expecting upon his arrival. The Brazilian was then preparing for the 2019 Copa America, but missed the tournament due to a torn ligament injury. While he was recovering, Neymar skipped a few preseason trainings and the club threatened to take disciplinary measures. He returned to the field in September, but within the month, a new injury complicated things again. It initially looked like Neymar wouldn't be able to perform, but that would end up being his most prolific season at PSG. He scored twice against Borussia Dortmund to finally take the Parisians to the Champions League quarterfinals until the pandemic forced UEFA and the French Confederation to suspend all competitions. Four months later, during the first official game post-quarantine, Neymar scored the title-winning goal in the Coupe de France. He also scored in the penalty shootout that gave PSG the League Cup title, completing the domestic treble after Ligue 1 was abruptly terminated due to the pandemic. There was just one more challenge remaining, and it was the big one, the Champions League. With its reorganization to complete the tournament. PSG was losing to Atalanta in the quarterfinals when Neymar assisted his compatriot Marquinhos to tie the game in stoppage time. The Parisians would score another one before the final whistle and advance to the semi-finals, where they easily dispatched of RB Leipzig 3-0 with another assist provided by Neymar. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. They'd won every single domestic title and were 90 minutes away from the UCL trophy. 
But FC Bayern had other plans, and the most desired trophy was once again denied for PSG. God, please, no! 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 They had been so close before, so the disappointment was immense. That was the best chance that Neymar had to make history after leaving FC Barcelona. The following seasons were a constant deja vu situation regarding the Brazilian and PSG. His back and forth performances being key in some victories, but without being able to maintain his form. Constant absences due to injury during the carnivals in Brazil. Yeah, sorry about this one, Ney, but you got injured during those dates for every single year except for 2020 when the pandemic started to terrorize Europe. Hmm, coincidence? I don't think so. I got you, homie. Not even teaming up with Messi again gave results as Paris Saint-Germain got knocked out of the Champions League each year more embarrassing than the previous one. Moreover, after losing the 2021 Copa America final at home against Argentina, Neymar played in his third World Cup in 2022. And shock horror, he picked up another injury in the first game and missed the following two matches. What? What the? Neymar returned in the round of 16 where he scored in the 4-1 victory against South Korea. And in the quarterfinals, Neymar would score again with an incredible extra time goal, giving Brazil the lead against Croatia. But the Europeans clawed their way back into the game to secure a penalty shootout where Neymar didn't get the chance to shoot. He was going to take care of the fifth penalty, but Brazil missed two of the previous four shots and Croatia advanced to the semis. Neymar did have some good performances, but once again failed to take Brazil to the final stages. Back in Paris, more bad news awaited him as he had to undergo surgery in March and miss the remainder of the season. Stop it. Get some help. The fans and frankly the majority of the board had had enough. Yes, Neymar had won almost every domestic title and helped PSG to become the most decorated team in France, but six years after his arrival, one thing was clear. Neymar had failed to achieve the one thing they had signed him for. While watching PSG win Ligo from the stands, Neymar's personal life gave him a great reason to smile. In June, Neymar's girlfriend publicly announced her pregnancy, although, to be honest, the circumstances were rather awkward, as the pregnancy announcement came just three days after Neymar's public apology for cheating on her. Justify the unjustifiable, didn't need to, but I need you in our life. I made a mistake, I was wrong with you, Brew. I already apologized for my mistakes, for the unnecessary exposition, but I feel obliged to publicly reaffirm that. If a private matter has become public, the apology must be made public. Neymar was once again criticized, but the couple remained together and confirmed they are expecting a baby girl. Finally, some peaceful moments appeared to await the Brazilian, but an unexpected turn of events would take him to an exotic destination. After letting Messi go, PSG clearly wanted to build a team surrounding Mbappe, and Neymar's place would once again be a sidekick. Exactly the same reason why he left Barcelona in 2017. Suddenly, the Brazilian started to see the possibility of leaving Paris, but where would he go? The 31-year-old was not the hot prospect he used to be, at least in Europe. So he made a controversial decision that commanded headlines worldwide. I'm here in Saudi Arabia. I am Hilali. Neymar chose to follow CR7 and Benzema's steps and chose to be a part of Al Hilal in the Saudi Pro League. The Brazilian assured that he wanted to explore new challenges, but it was said that as it happened to Messi, he wanted to rediscover his love and passion for the game. Away from the big pressure that European giants put on their players, Neymar could transform himself and become like that boy that dazzled everyone in Sao Paulo two decades ago. A marvelous $130 million annual salary also played a part, of course, the Saudis also offered a $120 million transfer fee to PSG, who quickly realized that it was the perfect chance to make money out of him. Some say that Neymar is planning to return to Europe or even to Brazil before the 2026 World Cup, but there's still a long way to go until that time. And opinions aside, it's safe to say that if Neymar does recover his best form, every fan will be delighted to see him enjoying what he does best, play football. What a journey. Neymar Jr. overcame serious difficulties throughout not only his career, but his personal life and got to the top before encountering a few bumps in the road. Now, he's the latest magician to leave Europe and there's still plenty of time for the Saudis to enjoy his qualities. Will he rediscover his best form at Al Hilal? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching. Neymar.